Welcome to New Day Cleveland. I'm Natalie Herbeck and we have a great show planned for you today. We've hopped on to 77 South and made our way to Stark County. So over the next hour, we are highlighting a few must visit spots throughout Canton. How about this? Did you know that Canton has a direct link to the White House and it's home to Ohio's first zero waste store. But our explorations begin right here with something sweet at Studio Bakery. I'm going to go find the owner. She's going to put me to work. Here she is. Hi, Kara. How oh, are hi, you? Natalie. Thank you so much for inviting us down here. Absolutely. This, this looks fabulous. I absolutely love the look. Now, this is just one of the many cakes I'm sure you make here. It is. So this is all about the sweets. And I love your bakery. The whole concept of this, mm -hmm. you're, I mean, you're out for everyone to see. Yep, we are. What made you want to create a bakery that's more of this style because normally when I head to them mm -hmm. I'm in the back somewhere with everyone we're cooking up in the kitchen yeah. why this so Brittany and I decided that we wanted to be a hundred percent from scratch bakery um, we wanted to be honest about the products we were doing mm -hmm. and so we felt it was important to have an open concept so we could be transparent in what we're doing, how we do it. Um, we wanted people to see what we were actually doing. So you mentioned Brittany, that's your co-owner, right? Yes. So the two of you, self-taught? Yes. That is impressive mm -hmm. in itself. Now I'll let you continue to work on this beautiful cake here. What Now what, what do you do to really, what type of cake is this first of all? This is our strawberries and champagne cake. Okay. And we feature it around uh, Valentine's Day, because you know, who doesn't like strawberries and champagne? Um, <laughs> so you change yeah. it up though, I'm guessing, for the holidays, for different seasons. We do. So this is what's in season now. Yes. I love the look at that. And yes. So you're decorating it with some beautiful, those look like champagne bubbles. Yes. So is this true that I heard something about the Food Network? Yes, we were on the Food Network. We particip We competed in uh, the Haunted Gingerbread Showdown. <gasps> yeah. And how'd you do? We did not win. Well, that's okay. I bet you <laughs> still tasted really good. I mean, just yeah. to get on the food network, that's yeah. an accomplishment in itself. Yeah, we did win our tasting challenge, which was really exciting. We didn't expect well, that's that. All, that's what I would but care it about. Was fun. We had so much fun. Okay, so what are we going to do here? So what I do, I usually just sprinkle a little in the, in the lid here, and then you just, it's random. You just really? kind of sprinkle it. Even, whatever. even? Yeah. Oh, I'm nervous. There you go. Oh, that's too there. much. No, because bubbles just occur naturally, so it doesn't that's matter. That's true. There okay. You go. Well, I'm surprised how well they stick. Uh, so simple. I created a masterpiece. <laughs> now, you have other cakes over here, too. I do. Is this one technically complete and then that, you could have writing on it if you wanted? That's done, absolutely. Okay. That looks stunning. And then this one is our decadent chocolate cake. And it is chocolate cake, chocolate ganache, chocolate Italian meringue buttercream. <gasps> And it's, it's really good. So it's a chocolate lover's delight. And you have a great little, at the front of the bakery here, you can get tea, coffee. Yes. There's a lot of other types. It's not just about the cakes here. Yes. It's a full bakery. It is. So what all do you do? So our specialty is our custom cakes and our French macaron. We have 24 flavors of French macaron. Mm -hmm. And Ooh, people healthy. come from far all away over. Yeah, <laughs> to get the French macaron. That's so it. when you say self-taught, like did you use did you go on YouTube or did you just trial and error it? So I was very fortunate to have some really good teachers and mentors uh -huh, at places uh -huh. I, oh, uh -huh. see, that's exactly, that's, that that's perfect. Much? Nope. And you can do bigger squeezes because it'll, the chocolate will fall farther. Oh, oh that's yeah, beautiful. Yeah. And then just turn your, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, are you really going to sell this thing? I am. I'm going to sell it. You can't tell where I, I started in you. Yeah I, yeah, I think I can, uh, but that's okay. <laughs> so there is really so much for you to come here, eat, enjoy, indulge. You're right, yeah. right in the heart of everything. We are. What street are we on again? We're on Dressler Road. Dressler Road mm -hmm. in Canton. Come and visit this place. And tell. <laughs> it's great. It's one of the first bakeries you'll see where you can see them in action. This will be a fun place to bring the kiddos. Absolutely. Because I'm sure they would love watching yes, you, Brittany, do. and the rest of the yeah. gang here really get to work. Yeah. Thank you for having us in You're here. You're welcome. Thank you so can much I for coming. Go buy some sweet treats to go, is that all right? Absolutely. We're kicking off the show. I need to get my, you know, I need to get the blood sugar going, right? <laughs> We're gonna go and do a little shopping right now in the warehouse district. Urban Loft um, is mostly in industrial furniture. Um, we make a lot of things ourselves with some live edge and some reclaimed iron pieces from old tools and old lathes and 
We do a lot of repurposing of, um, we have Jeep grills, we've done tractor hoods, um, you name it. And then in the shop, we just kind of fill in with some antiques and some vintage and just to give it all a little bit of life and show you what you can do with it. Our kids were getting older. They were getting ready to all move out on their own. And my husband and I just kind of looked at each other and said, what in the heck is going to be our next life, you know? So we, with the facing of empty nest syndrome and we didn't, I just wanted to avoid all of that, then we decided to kind of do this together. And we've always done projects together. We've remodeled all our houses. Um, we work well together. Um, I come up with an idea, he makes it work. The building is so cool. Um, so this uh, building itself was designed by Thomas Edison. It was the old powerhouse and it supplied boiler heat to all of downtown Canton. I've tried to set it up in small vignettes to give a really good idea of, okay, so if I bought this piece of furniture or I bought this antique or I bought this vintage piece, I have an idea of kind of where I would put it. So I try to give everybody the best idea that I have, hoping, hoping it's gonna spark an idea for them. It's basically going through a scrap pile at a, at a farm, um, going through the wood pile, going to a flea market, going to an auction, and it's just something that will spark. And then I grab it, and then I tell my husband, this is what we're gonna do with it. He looks like at me like I'm crazy, and we somehow make it happen. So We're actually refinishing an old uh, 18, late 1800s copper bathtub. Um, it is uh, copper on the inside, tin on the outside, being that he was a retired sheet metal worker, he's kind of got, I got the inside track on the, any repairs or anything that needs done. Um, so we're gonna refinish that and make it last another 120 odd years. We have some uh, authentic Jeep grills that I've rewired and made them into kind of wall art Edison bulb lights. There are, um, there's this cool bar um, that's actually at, made out of ash and the emerald ash borer beetle had came and destroyed all these ash trees. Well, then they die, but they leave this awesome art behind. So that's probably one of my favorite bar pieces. Then there's vintage pieces like old typewriters. There's old stage lights. Um, we're in the process of actually rewiring another stage light that's gonna be a cool floor lamp. We've got some industrial lights in the back that we're re rewiring and gonna make some cool funky lamps out of those as well. We have tire molds from Goodyear, Bridgestone, um, Cooper Tire, and we've made some mirrors out of those. We've made some end tables, uh, oh my gosh, a clock. Um, people will look at some of our raw materials and they'll have an idea. And then we work with them on making something totally unique to them. Urban and Loft is located in downtown Canton's Warehouse District. Now, as for the hours, your best bet is to call ahead before you head out the door. Still to come, Canton's link to the White House. Welcome back to our road trip here in Canton. The city has a direct link to the White House. Who knew? And it's working hard to preserve the history of our first ladies. So welcome. You are at First Ladies National Historic Site, which is a fantastic um, National Park Service site here um, in Canton, Ohio, downtown Canton. Um, we operate on two city blocks. You're actually standing right now in the home of Ida Saxton McKinley. So this house was originally built by the Saxton family. They're an original founding family for the city of Canton, Ohio and Stark County. Um, they were very prolific and a wealthy family um, in that time period. Um, and that family helped establish a great many things here in Stark County. So the house is um, 1920s time period comes. Um, it's passed down through generations of females and the young woman who was offered the chance to have this home loved it, thought it was a beautiful house in downtown Canton, but had a home who had modern amenities such as electricity and running water. Sometimes very helpful <laughs> when you're deciding where you want to live. 
So at that point, the house became commercial use. So when we moved into the house with the Timken Foundation and the Stark Community Foundation, we began restoration of the house, which was um, a very challenging process considering all that was in it before that. We had to go through a lot of historical digging to figure out what not only the building looked like, then more importantly, what, was, what artifacts were here in the house. And then we had to start work with other um, museums, presidential sites, and then the family to try to pull back original artifacts to the house. The house, depending on the room, um, has upwards of 70% original artifacts in the room, but when it comes to then um, sort of the hard fixtures, wallpaper, lights, carpeting, and so forth and so on, um, none of that is obviously original, with the exception of one really important rug that we have in here. I think one of the most exquisite artifacts of President McKinley and First Lady Ida McKinley's time in the White House is this Navajo rug that they got when they went on their Western trip. This rug basically got rolled up, put in storage, and really didn't come out and see the light of day until it was basically brought back and put back here. It's a priceless artifact, not only for us and the story we get to tell with it, but of Native American artifacts. It's a simply stunning piece. So the room we're standing in right now was originally the um, was the living room area for the very beginning of the house in the 1860s. Um, as they did additions, it became the dining room of the house. And so um, we didn't know what the dining room necessarily looked like. So what we did was we brought a little bit of Ida's um, White House decor to Canton, Ohio. So the wallpaper that you see on the walls was the wallpaper that she had hung in their private um, quarters in the White House. So we went back through records, found out who made that, and had it reproduced um, for the site here so that we could share a little bit of that really beautiful and ornate history. We have the furniture here that President McKinley and Ida had in their private quarters in the White House. So if you go upstairs, you're going to see their bedroom furniture um, that they had there. So we operate on two city blocks. Um, so you can go to not only the Saxon McKinley House, but to our Education and Research Center. The Education and Research Center has evolved over time from being just a place for literally research and intellectual property on First Ladies to now housing exhibits because we have started accumulating artifacts over time for First Ladies. I guess that's what happens when you start to do research and people start to think, well, I have this thing and I don't know what to do with it because there's no one who really collects and, and keeps those artifacts safe. Um, and so we started to collect those items. I think the most interesting place is the house um, for us because we get to tell a story from birth to death of a first lady and that's something that's unique across the United States. You're not gonna go somewhere else and find a space like this that we can tell that story in. And then over the Education and Research Center, our exhibits are constantly changing because we want people to see all the beautiful artifacts we have and then come on loan to us from other museums and spaces. And then we, of course, have educational programming that we and the National Park Service provide um, throughout the year to then engage guests further from birth to um, senior citizens. So we have something for everyone here. The First Lady's National Historic Site is in downtown Ken. Hours do vary based on season. Now, not too far away, you'll find a small shop that's taking history and incorporating your family memories. Here's a look. Vintage Frame Affair is um, a custom picture frame shop. We do primarily vintage and reclaimed picture frames. Typical custom picture frame shops, um, they do all brand new frames, but there are so many beautiful vintage frames um, just floating around out there that either get thrown away or people just discard that I thought it would be a really cool idea to take some of those vintage frames and reuse them. We can cut them to fit. We can paint them any kind of color. We can leave them the way they are. So it's actually just a really um, cool way to recycle. And because everything is reclaimed, the cost of having something frame ends up being about a third of the cost of going to a traditional custom picture framing shop. It's an endless hunt always, um, but you know we hit um, estate sales, auctions, thrift stores, garage sales in the summertime. We have a lot of people now that they know that we're here. We'll just pull up and drop stuff off instead of taking them to the thrift store or something because they know that we'll completely disassemble them, take them apart, clean them, fix them, and then um, get them on the shelf and give them a good home. Not all of them are vintage, that's why we do say they're reclaimed, so even if they're just a few years old but they've been previously loved, um, we'll take them and we'll take the glass out of them and everything, and, and so it's just a great way to recycle them. 
We usually run about 10 days. Um, closer to the holidays, it could be like two weeks. I know there was a period of time this summer it was like two weeks. If you have an item you'd like framed, you would bring it in. Um, we will pick out um, a frame that you like that fits. If it doesn't fit, like I said, we can cut it down to fit. Pick out a matting, whatever kind of you know bits and pieces, colors you want. It's different than any other place because a lot of um, traditional frame shops will not let you bring your own frame in and they won't cut them or paint them or anything like that. So you get that special frame back then when you're done. A lot of them are very heavy um, and they've stood the test of time. They're still here. So um, yeah, we have some gorgeous ones back here that just weigh an unbelievable amount. You wouldn't believe. <laughs> so, but yeah, they're, they're all wood. We don't do any plastic ones. We don't handle, we don't deal with any metal ones. So all of our frames are wood. If somebody has like an old frame, a, let's say a family heirloom um, picture and it's in a frame, we will allow them to bring their own frames in and we'll work with them. So they get to keep the frame but maybe update it um, so that they still get that special frame but they can maybe change out the artwork that's you know 50 years old in it or whatever. So. Vintage Frame Affair is on 4th Street Northwest. When we return, Lunch is served. Welcome back to our road trip to Canton. Who is hungry? Wait until you see what is on the menu at a downtown Italian market in Delhi. Slimmer Editore is uh, Italian market and deli. Um, we offer meats and cheese by the pound, a lot of imported Italian stuff, some hard to find retail, high quality olive oils, vinegars, uh, and pastas. Uh, we also do um, catering and uh, sandwiches uh, for lunch, hot, hot paninis, pastrami sandwiches, and uh, subs as well. This deli was kind of uh, my brainchild for a while now. I grew up uh, until I was about 10 years old in upstate New York and then moved down to Florida. And in Florida, we never had any place like this. You know, we would stop when we were in New York every weekend, it seemed like, pick up some meat and cheese for the week. And I missed having that kind of atmosphere and that kind of smell, really. Um, so, you know, the opportunity came up and uh, here we are. The pastrami is a little unique. Uh, we use a, um, a beef belly. Uh, or a navel pastrami. So it's got a little bit of a higher fat content. Um, but what we'll do is we'll warm it up on the griddle beforehand, melting out most of that fat, uh, and the rest kind of soaks into your bread a little bit. And it's a lot more flavorful than, say, uh, a round uh, pastrami or even a brisket uh, pastrami. Um, so it, it is, in my opinion, one of the better cuts. We have three different types of prosciutto. Um, Soprasadas, salamis, uh, we have uh, guanciale, which is a, a very specialty um, cured pork item that comes from the cheek. Um, we have our pastrami, we have our turkeys and our roast beefs. Cheeses are always changing, uh, depending on you know, what I can find and what I can get. Um, I carry some of the basics uh, imported from Italy, the Pecorino Romano, the uh, Grana Padano, the Parmigiano Reggianos. Um, I also have a imported Gorgonzola and Asiago, as well as the domestic side of that. Um, you know, we'll carry provolones from US and Italy, same thing with the Asiago. I think our most popular sandwich right now is the, uh, the Italiano, which is our version of the uh, Italian hoagie. Um, it's um, Genoa salami, pepperoni, and capicola, um, provolone cheese, and we do a, our house garlic sauce and a uh, balsamic reduction on there with um, some uh, hot pepperoncinis uh, just to uh, round it out. Working beside my wife is the I mean, it's a dream, really. I, uh, she comes in a couple times a week. She's got her nine to five too, so she has to. Uh, she's not here all the time, but when she is here, um, we really are the perfect match as far as brainstorming and uh, expanding this place into what we uh, we kind of envision it to be. So part of the reason I chose Ken was because I was the executive chef downstairs. Um, 
this spot came up for lease. Um, I saw the space. I had this idea in mind and I kind of just had to go for it. So we're here. Um, we have this beautiful mural on the wall. It uh, was uh, original and um, it kind of fits everything together and makes a nice um, ambiance that I had. just couldn't ask for more. So Lou Maria de Torre is located in downtown Ken. All right, time to get that shopping fix. One of a kind home decor is what you'll find at our next stop. Pine Tree Primitives and Rustic Riches is we flow in antiques and upcycled and a lot of stenciled signs. So we try not to throw anything away. We try to find a purpose for everything. I was 14 <laughs> and I did my first craft show in North Canton. And back then you had to be an adult. You couldn't do it. And so we had to go through a lot of paperwork and I was the youngest person that did the craft show. And I did these signs. I just would write, hand write all these different signs and they were really popular. And then everybody started doing signs. So and then we started turning them into different things. So I've been doing it for a long time. <laughs> oh, you're gonna find home decor, candles. We have etched mugs that we can personalize anything you want on it. Um, we make stencils. We can make any sign from small to big. It doesn't matter how big. We do a lot of custom work, um, stenciling on furniture. Um, we can come and paint your kitchens, you know, with the farmhouse look. We do, we try to keep with all the stuff that's, you know, up to date. We have um, our candles and she makes them out of soy, which are really nice and are scents that last a long time. And the jars, like I said, so you don't throw them away, you bring them back to us and we refill them. I like to take the old furniture and then we repurpose it and turn it into something else, you know, like a bar or a stool or, you know, some kind of cabinet. And we like to do that and stencil on it and make it unique. Downtown Canton, um, we like the coziness of it, um, the friendliness. Like I said, on 4th, on 4th, there's a lot going on. And it seems like anytime you come down to Canton, there's a lot going on. And with Pine Tree Primitives, we had been for a while. And then um, my daughter, when they decided to start making some things and doing some stuff with her husband, um, we did, he added the rustic riches. Her husband did that, Doug came up with that idea. And it's nice because it just added, everything else kind of flows together. I know it's a mouthful, but Pine Tree Primitives and Rustic Riches is really all what we are. We find all kinds of stuff in here and the Rustic Riches, you know, are unique finds. Pine Tree Primitive and Rustic Riches, say that one three times fast. It's open Wednesdays through Saturdays. Still to come, we're exploring more on 4th Street. Welcome back to New Day Cleveland. We are heading inside of Ken's premier cheese shop, one of my favorites, featuring flavors from really around the world. Fromage is um, the French word for cheese, and fromage du monde means cheese of the world. And although our shop is French inspired, we certainly do not want to be hemmed into just thinking that we only carry French product. Uh, we carry cheese from creameries, artisan creameries, all over North America and Europe. The idea came because my husband and I have a long history in hospitality. He's a chef and I was a catering sales and marketing director for a long time. We knew that we wanted to have our own hospitality something, but we definitely didn't want a full service restaurant. My knowledge comes from my long background in food, but definitely doing a ton of research uh, before we opened Fromage du Monde because I needed to know how cheese was born, how it's aged, what makes different cheeses fall into the categories that they fall into. And so not only did I do a lot of online research, but I did intern with a little shop in Cincinnati that um, inspired this place. And I also visited with some local farms and local creameries um, so that I could get a full working knowledge of the animals grazing to the end product. 
definitely when we are able to communicate with our customers where the cheeses come from, what kind of animals they come from, uh, where those animals graze, what time of year, uh, it's definitely part of the story that goes along with their dining experience and it makes it all the more special. So we are a cut to order cheese house. When you come into Fromage du Monde, you're going to see um, wheels of cheese in the case that are intact. And what that means is, again, we further the deli culture in here by pulling the wheels out, unwrapping everything, kind of asking you what type of milk type you're looking for, what kind of taste you're looking for. And a part of it is just pulling the product out of the case and letting people taste. People like to come in and just nosh a little bit, so we offer cheese flights. Cheese flights are a collection of cheeses, different milk types and textures. We like to include uh, a cow's milk, a sheep or a goat's milk, and then also a blue cheese on the flight. Um, those can be changed out if you're not a blue cheese lover or a goat cheese lover, we understand, but that's the standard flight that we offer. Along with that is a house-made pickle, a house-made compote, house-made candy pecans, and crostini, and then we usually give you a fresh or a dried fruit along with the three cheeses. On top of offering just cheese, we actually roll out a new sandwich and a new soup every week. You can log on to our website at fromagecanton.com to see what the sandwich and the soup of the week is, um, but that is part of the dine-in beauty of being here at our little shop. You can sit at the counter or we have three little cafe tables that you can dine at. It is one of the oldest food types available. It is the way that ancient people preserved dairy and it really does connect people. So in order to, or the beauty of my shop is that people can come in, they can hear a story, they can try new things, and usually what ends up happening is people connect with each other, which is the ultimate goal. The cheese shop is on 4th Street Northwest. Now speaking of north, we're heading a bit north to visit a beautiful studio built around glass. Well, we've been in business almost 40 years and our main business is we make custom design and make stained glass windows for people's homes, for churches, restaurants, businesses. Uh, we anything that's stained glass, bevel glass, faceted glass, etch glass. Uh, we do corporations where we'll design um, entranceways, big plaque systems. Um, our main business is doing church windows, new and restoration. Our gift shop is custom um, stained glass plus anything that is done by artists all over the United States and Canada. Um, so obviously if it's a stained glass frame, a stained glass window, a stained glass lamp, it's made here on this location. If it's a piece of hand blown glass, it's made from an artist down in New Orleans. It's made by an artist in Canada, in California. Those are our main locations for custom or, or for um, hand blown glass. All our jewelry is handmade from artists all over the United States and Canada. Uh, we like one of a kind, things that are really going to be different that you're not going to see anywhere else. Um, it just makes them more special. Classes, we do fused glass snowflakes where you take the glass, um, the, it's about a two hour class, the person would adhere the glass together, we'll put the glass in the kiln, fire that glass to about 1450 degrees, they'll come back and pick up a snowflake, a snowman, and it gets them back in the store again to see and purchase gifts. We do tons of repairs and restorations for people, um, for people's homes, plus churches um, and restaurants. Uh, we have a restaurant where somebody threw a rock through a window the other day. So we took the stained glass window out. We had made them about 20 years ago and we're restoring it and then we're going to reinstall it. We have a home down in Marietta that we're making custom painted leaded glass windows for them where every single piece of glass has been hand painted, fired, probably each piece of glass five times. If we don't save the window from the church, it's going to get demolished. So if you think about it, uh, we saved the windows from the Good Shepherd Church in Akron. Um, we found out that they were going to demo this church and we got there, took as many windows out of the church as we could, 
brought them back to the studio and restored the windows and now what we're trying to do after they've been restored is placing them into another church and so they can be um, loved and appreciated for another hundred years. I mean, really appreciate the beauty that somebody put into that. Um, an artist had to create that design for that window. Um, a craftsman had to fabricate the window, cut the glass, let it, um, glaze it, clean it, install it. So it takes an artist to do the creation, um, a craftsman to actually physically make the window and people sacrifice to have those windows made and it just you got to appreciate the beauty the color coming through the windows and really the beauty of the window studio arts and glass is easy to find you can see the sign from i-77 all right we are not done yet our road trip to kenton continues right after this with a first of its kind store in ohio Welcome back to our Canton Road Trip. What do you think so far? Did you know that Canton is home to Ohio's first zero waste store? Let's head inside. Empty Bin Zero Waste is uh, the first zero waste store in Ohio. We're very proud of that fact and hope that others will join us in the future. Um, but currently we sell items that replace single use plastic and paper. So we have cutlery sets, um, menstrual products, toothbrushes, different soaps, and then we have um, bulk options as well. So people would bring in their own containers. We don't have containers for people to, um, you know, dispose of plastic ones or plastic bags. Bags is the, like the easiest thing. So I always recommend um, switching out to reusable grocery bags. Start with that. If you start with one simple thing, master that and then move on to the second item you know maybe a water bottle then you know carry your own don't buy any water bottles i started this primarily it was kind of organic because i've been a vegetarian for 26 years then i found out you could make laundry detergent which was just amazing to me i had no idea you could do that so i started making my own products at home so because of all the toxins you read all the ingredients it's crazy um, and then I had my first granddaughter, now I have three grandchildren, and I just felt really bad about what we're leaving their generation. I was a child in the 80s, and everything was plastic, plastic Tupperware, plastic everywhere, and I'm, I'm slowly teaching them. When they come over, she knows where like the compost is, and the garden, and the recycling, so hopefully, you know, we can help people transition to make it a little less difficult on the, the babies nowadays. <laughs> One of the most popular ones uh, currently are stainless steel straws. Um, we also have bamboo and glass. Um, just the other day I was parking outside and there was a straw in the street. So it really does happen. You don't, you think, how is there a straw in the street or in the ocean? I don't know, but <laughs> it's a good thing to get rid of. So we have stainless steel straws, um, reusable sandwich bags, our second biggest seller. Um, bamboo toothbrushes, we have dental floss that is biodegradable, different um, shopping bags, different bags like that, um, produce bags too, which I make out of lace curtains, um, so it's a repurposed material. All of our bulk soaps over there, they're already made. Um, Castile soap is very popular, it's been around for a really long time, and there's so many different uses for one soap. So you come in with your container, or you can purchase one of ours that we have here, Fill it up, we do a tear weight, um, so you're only paying for the product that's actually in your container. At the store, when you go buy things, you're paying for the container as well. Um, but you can do everything with those. There's about 20 different uses. The shampoo is um, a new product. It's the only one that I found that has plant-based, uh, no toxins in it, there's no scent in it. So we have um, a complimentary essential oil bar here. So if you want to scent your own shampoo and make it completely your own, you can add whatever you'd like to that. So you can come in, bring your own containers, and fill up all the ingredients that you would need to make your own deodorant or your own lotion bar, your own chapstick. And I'm going to have a recipe book as well that has all of the recipes that I use for that. And then you can take a picture of it so you know what you want to bring in next time container-wise to make your own products. You know, even though zero waste is, is a 
a popular term right now. It's really not possible in today's era. If you lived out in the woods, you know, completely homesteading, you might get there. But right now we're just trying to like let the public know that there are options that last longer and that we just want to reduce waste as much as possible. Empty Bin Zero Waste is on 4th Street Northwest. Okay, our next stop, just a couple doors down. This is Boom Diata. A terrarium is a little ecosystem. It's basically taking um, plants and encasing them in glass. It can be a wine bottle, it can be any clear glass container that you enclose. And then once you put that top on, a little water cycle starts going around inside. So the initial moisture that you put in, it evaporates to the sides, the top and around again, and really is self-sustaining and that's the magic of the terrariums. Uh, Boom Diata is a, is a funny name, but I actually was really frustrated trying to find a name, uh, just punching in everything that I could think of. It was already taken. I was frustrated. I threw up my hands, went to the park because that's what I do. And my daughter was with me babysitting and she put this little guy in a swing and started singing a song that my mother sang to me and I sang to her. She was singing to him and it's uh, all about earthy things and just, I love the mountains, I love the rolling hills, all about the earth. And then it says, boom de da boom de da boom de da boom, and you sing it in a round. So it seemed like it fit and we went for it. We are here really to be just an earthy adventure. Uh, you can do 10 minute terrariums. We always have those going. If we're open, we're doing some kind of making and taking. So we have 10 minute terrariums that are usually 10 to $15 a piece. And you can sit right down and just pop in during the week and do. We also have one to two hour workshops if there are more four or more people, then you can schedule a time of your own and you can um, bring your snacks and bring your beverages, bring your wine, make it a party. You can do all of those things. And also if there are one or two people, just if you're down during the week, it's pretty laid back. So you can usually pop in and make a wine bottle terrarium, you know, just sit down and do something. You are building all these layers that you're ultimately going to see and that are really beautiful, but every layer also has practical purpose. So you start with some drainage because little plants do not like to have their feet wet or stand in water any more than we do. And then you have a sphagnum moss layer that just keeps your dirt from going down into your pretty rocks and keeps the moisture level just right and then you have your soil and then we get to planting and we pick some tropical plants because um, you have to put a humidity loving plant in a terrarium. I see a lot of people put succulents in and they're not gonna be happy unless they have an open side somewhere. So um, you put your plants in there and then you basically landscape the top with sand and you know, a little path, some kind of water feature or you know, rocks of some kind and finish it off. And then we water it up, put the top on and it's good to go. You really don't have to do much with it after that. I discovered that I could take a tiny globe or a tiny teardrop and I could make a terrarium necklace. And I also discovered that I could take pocket watches and gut them. And one of my favorite things to do is to make a little pasture or a little landscape inside of the pocket watch. To watch the creative process is just so fun to me. You know, every single time you start with these pieces and it's like, hmm, and then by the time that they're done and they walk through this whole process, they have something they're really delighted with. And I love that. If you're looking to do a little shopping, 4th Street Northwest is home to several shops, including the two that we just featured. Now we have one more stop. It's a cozy shop in Canton after this.
Welcome back to New Day Cleveland and our road trip here in Ken. We are wrapping up things with a visit to Bare Naked Wolves. Bare Naked Wolves is um, a series of undyed, chemical-free yarns that are produced sustainably. We, we work only with farmers and mills in the U.S. We carry yarn for knitters and we have 16 or 18 different yarn lines that we produce in different weights for hand knitters and crocheters. And um, I'm a designer, so we also carry all of my patterns, which is almost 600 designs at this point, for sweaters, shawls, scarves, accessories um, from the very simple type of thing that a beginner could make all the way up to um, you know very experienced um, knitting patterns. I actually began knitting as a small child. I was about four years old and um, I my grandmother knit and I just wanted to do it so you know she kind of put me off at first by saying you have to be able to write your name so um, I, I wasn't in school yet but I asked my brother to teach me how to write my name and and when I could prove I, I could do that, she started teaching me to knit. So probably starting from about the age of 10, I just started fiddling around with making my own sleeve designs on things and um, changing uh, you know, the pattern somewhat. And it just evolved into a stricter, more disciplined um, way of doing things. I usually try to encourage people to, to do the beginning steps, learn to knit and learn to purl, learn to cast on stitches and bind off stitches, but then quickly, you know, make something that you want to wear with a yarn that you really want. You know, pick something that you kind of want to treat yourself to and that you'll enjoy picking up. Our yarn lines with our label on them are all completely undyed yarns, which means that all the color range that you see along the wall there is all produced by the animals themselves. And we try to take advantage of that range and mix it with um, other types of wool and blend it with different fibers so that we can even expand the range more. Our yarns are custom spun, which means that I actually design the yarns and the fiber blends that go into them and work with the mill to produce the actual yarn structure. So I can kind of dictate um, what types of blends I'm interested in making and produce yarns that you can't buy anywhere else. Most of our yarn lines are unique blends of either specific sheep mixed with silk or alpaca or single breed yarns, which are yarns that are spun from one type of sheep wool only and usually from just one farm. So we even know the names of the sheep that, that produce the yarn, the fiber for that yarn. I've just loved it all my life. I love the, um, the having my hands in the materials. I love, I love designing. I love creating new um, compositions with stitches and with yarns. And um, I love sharing them with other people. And actually, I really love writing up the knitting patterns. Our pattern line has an excellent reputation, and, um, and that's because I really enjoy writing them, and I put a lot of work into making them user-friendly for people. Bare Naked Wools is located on 15th Street Northwest. Guess what? That wraps up our visit here in Canton. We know that we've missed a lot of great shops and restaurants, but we only have so much time. So reach out to us and let us know about your favorite so that maybe we can plan another visit down here. I'm Natalie Herbeck, and we'll see you on the next New Day Cleveland.